we define the extremal number. So extremal number of n h is the maximum number of edges. in an n vertex graph g such that h does not embed into g so g, g does not contain h as a subgraph <coughs> and we show that uh, for complete graph h does not yep <laughs> so we uh, study about the case when H is a complete graph, which was Turan theorem. And then we also consider o H, which is not bipartite. And Eris Stone Simonovich theorem gives us an asymptotic on that. And we also consider the case where H is a complete bipartite graph. Another natural graph we can consider is a cycle. So for forest, I mean, for tree, tree is also one natural case. It was left as an exercise in exercise 2.3. And what we want to consider is cycle. So for cycle, if we think about odd cycle, then our cycle is not bipartite. It's three chromatic. So Ariston Simonovich theorem already gives us an asymptotic on the extreme number of odd cycle. Then still we are left with even cycle. Say C sub 2K is a cycle of length 2K. So it consists of 2K vertices. And then 2k edges. So this is C6. So in case, I mean, someone doesn't know what cycle is, this is cycle. <laughs> <coughs> so what can you say about this number? So what if we have a graph which doesn't contain C2k, then how many edges does it have? So to simplify a situation, let's just consider the case where we are forbidding, say, all even cycles up to size 2k. So instead of forbidding just one, let's say we are forbidding those things. And then to make a situation simpler, so let's say g is, say, d regular. So in this case, if we know d, then we directly know that the, how, I mean, how many edges does g have, right? So this is just an additional assumption to make the things clear at the first. In this case, how big D can be? So in, if we assume that, then what happens is if we take one vertex and consider its neighborhood, then it contains exactly D vertices. <coughs> and then we con consider its second neighborhood. So we write this as say, let's say this is x, then this is first neighborhood, and this is second neighborhood. So second neighborhood means that uh, all the collection of vertices, which is distance 2 from x. Then what's the size of this set? Because we forbid C4, this situation doesn't happen. That's C4. So all of these d vertices have a neighbor which doesn't overlap. So this is size d square. D times d minus 1? Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> yeah. In extremal <laughs> graph theory, we just forget the older <laughs> model thing. So forgive me for that. That is correct. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> OK. <laughs> and then, then what's the third neighborhood? So again, if something I mean, some neighborhood, this, some neighborhood this coincide, then either we get C4 or C6. Maybe I should use different color. <coughs> so C6 or C4. So again, uh, let me be careful. So D times D, yeah, D square, yeah. So this happens, I mean, this keep happens. Then how many times can we go? If we go, say, k times, then 
this still happen. K, pro, K to K plus one, it might not happen because we didn't forbid C sub two K plus two, but at least K times we can do this. And then these are all disjoint, and then at the Kth time we get D times, okay, let's just say D to K. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <coughs> and then this should be at most size N because we consider N vertex graph. Then what's D? D should be at most N to the one over K. Then number of edges of G should be N to the one plus one over K. So in this simple situation, we have this upper bound. <coughs> so instead of that, if we forget this and then just forbid this one, and we don't have this situation, then that's what we want to do. And then in that case, indeed, we can do, I mean, we can find the similar upper bound. So let's say, where is the theorem? So theorem 2.6 says that Bondi and Shimonovich show that uh, for k at least 2, so there exists a constant c such that extremal number of even cycle, 2k cycle, is at most c times n to the 1 plus 1 over k. <coughs> so indeed, this and this are same up, up to constant. So that intuition, so this theorem tells that the dead intuition gives us the indeed, I mean, correct upper bound. So how do we prove this? So in here, the reason why we had to forbid more structure was that the, when this co when this coincide, we don't know whether they meet at up the up, up in the top or here. So we are not sure whether. This collision, collision give us C6 or C4. So what we need is we want some, so, okay. Oh, okay, let's just do it this way. So what we need is some sort of gadget or some sort of thing that we can use so that uh, if something coincides here, then we kind of want to do it this way. So let's say k is the largest one, right? So it, let's say k is three. So this, in this case, we are okay because we get the contradiction from getting c six. But in the before case, we couldn't get c six. We only get c four. We get shorter cycle. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to come up with some gadget which give us this kind of path of the length. I mean, correct length. So for that, what we want to consider is the following gadget. <clears throat> so let's say definition. We say uh, we call a cycle with length at least 2k having one course. Uh, theta graph. So what it means is if we have a cycle, it doesn't have to be even cycle. It could be even cycle or all cycle, it doesn't matter. We have cycle of length at least 2k and there is one chord. So chord is the uh, edge inside of, I mean in cycle there is an edge which is not between non-conjective vertices, then we say it is a chord. <coughs> so this is theta graph if the length is at least 2k. So this is the gadget that we want to use in here to obtain the path of length we want. So to use that gadget, we need to show two things. First thing is that we need to ensure that we can find one of these in here unless it expands. What I mean expands is d and d square and d cube. 
So if it expands, then it is okay. But if it doesn't expand, then we want to find this and then use property of this. Which property? The property that I described, the path thing that we want to find certain path which satisfy good condition so that uh, we can close it up there to get a cycle of length 2k. What if that graph has two, two cores? They do still call that beta k graph? This? Yeah. So this has the theta graph as a subgraph, so it is okay. okay. So as long as we find something looks in this way, in there, then we can use it so with its problem. It doesn't have to be induced. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so for that, we need So we need to prove two lemma. First is regarding existence of that theta graph. And second is regarding its good property. So lemma 2.4 says that uh, any graph with average degree is say t of g is average degree at least 4k contains a theta k graph, theta graph. So here g of g is average degree which is twice of h is over n. <coughs> so because I mean twice of number of h is the sum of all degree, we d add all the degrees and we take a average, that's average degree, this is that. So how do we prove this? Let's prove proof of lemma 2.4. <coughs> so if you did the exercise yesterday, so in exercise 2.3a, it says that if we have a graph with large average degree, then we can take a subgraph whose minimum degree is also large. So I mean, the proof is not difficult if you have a Average, I mean, graph with certain average degree, average degree at least d, then if some vertex has, I mean, low degree, then we just delete it. And what, by doing that, we, we, I mean, we can make sure that its average degree doesn't go down. So we can keep doing that until you get a certain graph with average degree, I mean, minimum degree at least half. <coughs> so let's just say, yeah, in the printout, I wrote it as h, so let's just use h. So, by exercise 2.3a, there exists a subgraph, the h prime of h, with minimum degree at least 2k. So every degree was 4k, and minimum degree is at least 2k. <coughs> and we take a longest path in h prime. Let's say longest path is P, and which is x1, x2, x, what did I write? M. So we have x1, x2, x3, xm. Then what do we know? So there could be some vertices outside. This is longest path means x1 to here, there is no edge. If there is an edge, then we can get a longer path. So all of its neighbors are actually inside of this path. So there is first neighbor here, and second neighbor here, third neighbor here, and then because of minimum degree, we can find the two case neighbor here. Then this is a cycle with length at least 2k. And then inside of that, there is at least one chord. So because we say 2k, so yeah, yeah, you can find one. <laughs> Let's say case at least two, so case at least two, so there are at most at least four of them, and except what, this one and except this one, there should be one. So that gives us already theta graph. Yeah.
2.3에 그렇게 됐었나요? 잠시. 2.3에 어디있지? 잠시만요. 여기 2.3. 오케이. Okay. DNS. DNS means, yeah. Every degree is 2DN. Yeah, 2D. D p l u s 1이 나오는지는 잘 모르겠는데. D p l u s 1 없어야 되는 거 아니에요? Yeah, we can check it later. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but at the moment I was riding the exercise. I thought it, it, it can be done, but maybe not, but yeah, we can check it later. So that's, an, that's your exercise, whether tech, whether one, one can be there or not. <laughs> yeah. So this proved this lemma. So we show that uh, this lemma regarding the existence of the gadget that we will use. <coughs> The next thing is that we want to show that the, that is actually the right gadget that we want to use, which means that it satisfies the good property that we want it to satisfy. So, which is about lemma 2.5. So, again, k is at least 2, and f is a theta graph. And Let A and B be a partition of vertices of the graph F. If you see this, so here we build up this path, right? But we, have, we, want, to, we want to get two things. So we want this two paths to have the right length and also it's we want that, that it's connecting between two right sets. Even if we find a path of right length, if they don't overlap, they don't form a, I go. <laughs> yeah. If, if we have a, this path and if they don't have a correct, I mean, merging point, then we cannot use it. Right? So we want it to have a right length and then it's connecting two I mean, sets that we have, cho we have chosen. So that's what we want to. I mean, achieve. So these two are the sets that, I mean, we want to specify later. <coughs> so what it says is that uh, A and B is a partition of this vertex set into two non-empty set. Such that at least one of A, A or B, A and B, and B, yes, is not an independent set. In F, then there exists a path from A to be with length, any length we want, with any length between 1 and the number of vertices in F minus 1. <coughs> so it's exactly what we, it's saying exactly what we want. We can find the path of any length we want which connects two sets that we specified before. Do you want this path to be uh, disjoint from F? No, it's inside of F. Oh, In F, we can find it. So uh, the role of the gadget is to give us this path later. But you said F is a set of K graph. Yeah. Inside of this graph, we can find the path. So inside of this, so we have a, this theta k graph, then we designate each vertex to say, this is go to A, this go to B, this go to B, this go to A, and you can find the path which connects A and B with the length we want. <coughs> so, let's prove lemma 2.5. So essentially why this lemma holds is that uh, because of this chord, we can like, so we proceed on the cycle 
and then we, we connect it. If they both belong to A or both belong to B, then that's bad. But if they both belong to, one belong to A and one belong to B, then we are done. So if they both belong to same thing, and then if we shift one and still belong to same thing, we shift one, still belong to same thing. So no matter how we shift it, the end vertices are always both in A or both in B. Then what we can do is we take it and we use it this chord and then go. Then because of this chord, that parity changes, so we can connect between A and B. So that's the reason. And to make it more precise, so let's just assume that its vertices is uh, number modulo n. So it's between 0 and n minus 1. <coughs> and i is adjacent to i minus 1 and i plus 1. And assume l which belong to uh, 1 to n minus 1 is an integer such that there is no path of length L between A and B. So we assume that there is some length L we cannot get, and we will derive a contradiction. And let the chord be between 0 and R, say. <coughs> and let's say C of I is 1 if I is in A and 2 if i is in b. So c is a coloring. So we want to find the path. One end has c value 1, and the other end has c value 2. And let's say p be the collection of all numbers, such that the for all, say, I, so this is like period. So C of I equal to C of I plus M. <coughs> so as I mentioned before, we want to take this path, and then if they are connecting to the same set, then we shift one, shift one, shift one, and then at some point, if we find something, then we are good, uh, something connects between A and B, then we are done. Otherwise, that length is a period in that cycle. So no matter how you, where you start, if you go 10 times, then you always end up with the same thing. Then 10 belongs to here. So if L is not in P, then we are done. That means there is some point you take, and then you go L times, then we, we, get, we end up in the different set. Then we are done. So L is in P. And choose a smallest element of P, say M, which is M. Then it is easy to see that this P is actually multiple of all M. Because, so this P is actually M, 2M, 3M, 4M and so multiple of m. Because if this was not multiple, then let's say we have m, and there is some element which is not a multiple, m prime. Then, I mean, the difference between these two, OK, let's not do it this way. So let's say we have m prime. So for some i, yeah, let's write this. <clears throat> so if m prime is in say p then we take and m does not divide m prime then we can find a k such that the mk and 
mk plus 1, so m prime lies between them. Then for each i, c of i is same with c of i plus m prime, and c of i is same with c of i plus m, and c of i plus 2m, c of i plus 3m, c of i plus m, k. So for all i, these two are same, that means for all i, c of i is same to c of i plus m prime minus m k. So this also belongs to p, which contradicts to the minimality of m. So this p must be all multiple of m. Especially l is there, so what we can know is that l is l and most n minus m, and l is m. Because it's multiple of m, and n is also multiple of m. Because of the same reason, if you wrap around one and then you end up with uh, some points which is not in m, between 0 and m, but not in m, then you get a contradiction in the same way. <coughs> so let's do some case analysis. So if m is 1, then the, this assumption is wrong. Then a is everything and b is not empty, then yeah, it doesn't happen. So say we are done. If m is 2, m2 means that uh, every, I mean, vertices are a, b, a, b, a, b, a, b, alternate. Then, say, okay, let's write it this way. And c of r equals c of 0. Oh, uh, no, let's say it. If the 0 and r has a different, I mean, color, then both a and b are independent, which is a contradiction that we assume that the a and b, one of them is not independent. And if m is 2 and c, r is same with c of g, yeah, then in the note I said that it is easy. OK, so I will write <laughs> it is easy. Because so in this case, so everything is a, b, a, b, a, b, a, b. So because of parity, any path that cross this chord always end up with a different part, so from a to b, when l is even number. So in this case, we assume that the m divides l, so n is e l is even number. So even number path on here always starts from the same part and then ends in the same part. But even path in here must start from a and ends from b because of the parity. <coughs> so assume m is at least 3. So, you, so when the case of m is at least 3, it's essentially same with what I just explained, but slightly different because, I mean, in this case, we can just say parity by 2, but this is slightly different. So in this case, we say that uh, we know that at least 1 of r and m minus r At least one of them are not congruent. To one modulo m, because m divides n, and these two add, add to n. So, if one of them is one modulo m, then the other one is negative one modulo m. But negative one is not one when m is at least three. So, so assume R is not in R is not congruent one modulo.
So that means this means that the R minus 1 is not multiple of M. So R minus 1 is not in P. So elements in P are all the multiple of M. So in this case, R minus 1 is not in P. So that means because of this definition, the P is defined this way. There is some, I mean, for all I, no matter where I will start, uh, I mean, later, M later, we get, we end up in the same part. <coughs> and this is not in there means that uh, there exists J such that C of J is not same with C of J plus R minus 1. So there is this J, so that if we start from J, and if we go R minus 1 time, then we end up in the different part. And here we know that the M is in this, okay, M is in this P. So if we have this path, and then this to belong to the different part. Then if we extend it by M, then this still starts from A because these two are different by M. M is defined in this way. So this still starts from different path, I mean different part. So this is from A to B. Even if we shorten it by M, this still starts from B. So we can add or shorten whatever way we want as long as that's by M. So we can assume that the uh, assume that the, this is this J is actually between say minus M with without strict equality and zero. Because if this is not true, then we add them or subtract them until it goes to that range. And then C of J is always different from C of J plus R minus 1 plus M I for any I. So we can add any, I mean, any, any number of times we can add them. So there is two cases we want to consider. <clears throat> and these two cases are based on say this is zero and this is R. Either we want to take a path that starts here and comes here and comes here. This type of path. So let's use some color. Either we want to use this yellow path or this blue path. If this, this part, this R is short, then we want to use this yellow path because it can get us the, any length we want. But if this is large, then this doesn't, doesn't give us too long path. So in that case, we, what we want to do is we want to use this way. So case one is when R is short. Yeah, so say R is between 0 and M. Then, okay, yeah, let's not check the detail, but so by doing that, we can actually find a path with, that starts from, so J is somewhere here, right? J is, I mean, between M and negative M. J J plus 1 up until to 0 and 0 and we jump it to R and R plus 1 so we go this up until to uh, J plus L plus R minus 1 we take this path and it starts at J and where does it end? J plus R minus 1 plus L L is the multiple of M so this is this type. So it starts here and it ends here. 
and it starts and ends at different part. And it has the right length if you count. If I didn't make, make a mistake. Yeah, I, I, think, yeah, I think it has the right length. So this is uh, this yellow path. When this part is short enough, this is yellow path. We can actually get this. We can make sure that the, this, this doesn't. So we get a problem if it goes all the way belong to here and overlap. But that doesn't happen because yeah, I delete it. We know that the L is at most n minus m. Because here, what we lose, lose is r. So we lose at most m length. So even here, we have enough number of vertices to get a path of length l. But if this is large, that doesn't happen. So what we have to do is we have to take this and then and then long, make, make it longer, make it longer, make it longer until we get the right length. So for that, case two, if r is between m and m minus m, we consider, say, j minus m i, j minus m i plus 1 up until 2, uh, 0, and r, r minus 1 up until to r plus j plus 1 minus m k. So here, up to this k, I mean, we, we lengthen it by i time, and we, again, lengthen it. We make it longer by k time. So this always starts from the same part as j, and this ends up with the same part of this. So they start and ends from the same different part. And then, yeah, choose i and k wisely, then you can make it as a exactly length L. Yeah, I will not show you how we can actually choose it, but I'm sure we can choose it. So that give a contradiction that we already got a I mean, path of length L, so which proves this lemma. So now we have collected all the tools. So we, we define the gadget that we want to use, and we show that uh, we can prove the existence of gadget under certain condition. And then we show that uh, that gadget has a right property that we want to use. So, <coughs> again, what we want to do is we want to use this approach. We want to show that uh, this expands. If it doesn't expand, then we can find the theta graph, which we can use to, I mean, use to build up one cycle of length 2k. So otherwise, it should, it should keep expand. So, proof of theorem. So the proof that I will present is a simplified version of a proof of a picol core. It's in reference 22, so you can. I have one question. There's a, you have this r plus j plus one minus n k. Um, so then the I mean I wasn't sure whether it's plus j maybe. So j is a negative number. Yeah, but don't you want to have a minus j here? Um, and because the length there is, so the first part, the length is uh, minus j plus mi. Yep. Yeah, and the second part, the length is no, uh, uh, it's decreasing, right? So you have to subtract r, I mean, it's uh, same. Wait. No, from here to here, so you have to add mk, and then... Oh, yeah, but, but still you have a minus j, right? Instead of plus j. So that be complete. That seems true, okay. So maybe it's r minus j plus 1 minus mk? Mm. 
no, we chose it that way. So we want this expression with here. So let me see. So that uh, okay, let's just consider, <coughs> consider i and k are zero. Then this has j to zero. So number of vertices is uh, one minus j. And r to here, which is minus j minus one. Did I make a mistake? Uh, J, 0, R, R, <laughs> So the length on the top part, the length is minus J, right? And then on the bottom part, the length is still minus J, so then you are Yeah, it seems you are right. <laughs> Did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, give me a moment. R minus one J. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it seems that I made a mistake, so exercise, <laughs> new exercise. <laughs> so figure out the right number. So, but the idea is that the one, I mean, yeah. In this case, you can take this, I mean, blue path, and then you figure out, I mean, right number, then you can do it. So if you believe me, it is really possible. Also, we didn't do the one, I mean, did we use symmetry to say that R is not one, or? You said either r is not congruent to one or n minus r is not. Yes, congruent. you can just flip it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. How did I not see it before? Yeah, last time I computed it, somehow I thought it said right way. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yeah, forgive my yeah, mistake. <coughs> Okay, just let's assume that the dilemma is true. Yeah. Then, okay, where I was. <laughs> okay, so in order to prove the theorem, what do you have to do? So assume that, uh, so to prove that if we have a graph with more than 10 number of edges, we want to show that it contains this C sub 2K. So, to prove that we use the contraction again, so we assume that we have a graph G with an M vertex graph. With say hundred K N to the one plus one over K edges. And it has no cycle of length 2k as a subgraph. So what you can assume is that by exercise 1.4, what do we know? If we have a graph with m edges, 
then it must contain a bipartite graph with m over 2 as it. So it's exactly 1.4, which can be proven in several ways. And one of the ways is that the, you, I mean, partition the vertices set into two in a random way, then the expected number of edges between two parts is m over 2. That means there exists a partition with uh, at least 10 number of edges. So we use that. That means G contains a subgraph, which contains 50k times n to the 1 plus 1 over k edges, which is bipartite. And then we use this exercise 2.3 I have deleted, which gives us a uh, subgraph with minimum degree, at least half of its every degree. So what we obtain is that uh, we have a subgraph G prime, which is subgraph of G, such that let's just say it, this G prime could have a low, small number of vertices than N, just but just, just assume that uh, this G prime contain N vertices. So that the uh, G prime is an N vertex graph, bipartite graph. With at least so its minimum degree is at least 20 k n to the 1 plus 1 over k. No, n to the 1 over k. <coughs> so we take bipartite graph, which loses half of its edges, and then we take a subgraph with a minimum degree half of its every degree. So it's more correctly 25, but 20 is also okay. In exercise 2.3, you delete vertices. Yes, so that's what I meant that uh, let's just say this n is actually smaller than this n, but that, let's confuse our self by using the, I mean, abuse the notion to say is it also n vertex. So this n is actually smaller than this n, but it's okay, let's just say it's n. <laughs> or I mean, if you prefer, I can put prime, but now, from now on, I have to put prime every time. So let's just assume that n is all n prime from now on. Yeah, it's getting. Maybe, maybe initially you had n prime, but it's going okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Where are you? Okay. So, as before, what we want to do is we want to show that <coughs> the, I mean, neighborhood of certain vertex keep expands. Neighborhood and second neighborhood, third neighborhood. <coughs> so let's take one vertex X. And then we consider its neighborhood. And second neighborhood. Third neighborhood. And fourth neighborhood and keep going. And let's say this is B1, this is B2, and I's neighborhood is B sub I. And this is B sub zero. And let's say for each I, let H I be the graph between P sub I and P sub I plus 1. So this is H1, this bipartite graph, this bipartite graph is H2. So again, our goal is to show that it keep expands unless we can find the theta graph here to find the cycle of even length 2k, cycle of length 2k. So, first we show that uh, this claim for each i, this graph hi does not contain
어, Fatograph. So how what we want to show this is that we want to first show that if we, if there is eta graph here, then we can find the even cycle. Then we, it's a contradiction. And if there is no theta graph, then we will show that uh, by using this lemma 2.5, this is sparse. This can be sparse if this one gets bigger. If so, this is already fixed. And next level is small, then it's getting denser. But it, but if it, if it's, I mean, this graph is sparse, then that means this vertex should be widespread. So that's what we want to do. So for that, we first show that uh, if there is a theta graph here, then we can find the even cycle, a cycle of length 2k. So for that, So, proof of claim. So, suppose it contains a theta, theta graph F. Suppose F uh, in HI is a theta graph. <coughs> then, what do we know? This HI is bipartite graph. So F must be also bipartite graph. So F is a bipartite graph, so it has a bipartition. And moreover, it looks like this. So if we fix one as a, I mean, one to one part, then that automatically determines all the vertices should go which part. So it has unique bipartition. So F has a unique bipartition. A prime and B prime. Let's draw it. What is the color? Yeah. So in here, if we have F, then we have say, let's not draw it here. Let's draw it here. We have this A prime and B prime, which is unique by partition of this F. And let's say A prime is upper one, so Bi, and B prime is Bi plus one. And we have this graph. So we start from X and we go this way. And then, so we add this edge here. So we take this edge. And then from here, we add its edge. And from here, we also add it. And if it has edge here, then we don't add this edge. We add it so that the, all, the, all the, I mean, later part are disjoint. So this is something called breadth for search tree. So this is tree because we never close it. So if there are two edges from this vertex to, I mean, here, if we have two edges, then we only choose one edge. Then we get this tree. So let's say this tree is T. Then what we know is we take and we say that the, this vertex is descendant of this above, and this above vertex is ancestor of this one, ancestor descendant. And so we have this A prime. So these vertices have a common ancestor. All of these vertices have a common ancestor, which is X, right? But there could be lower, I mean, another common ancestor here. So we take the, I mean, common ancestor, which is, I mean, close to this i's level. Let's say here we have this y. Yeah, it doesn't. So let's say this is y. And then everything here is a descendant of this y. 
And then that's the most close to this ice level. So every A prime is descendant of this Y. <coughs> and we take a child of this Y. So we take one of this below, below level, one of its child, which still have some of these vertices as its, its descendant. Let's say, let's say these two are in here, and then the rest of them is not under G, but under Y. Because Y is the closest common ancestor of this A prime, this G has some of it as a descendant, but not all of it as a descendant. So now our goal is to I mean, connect this Y and G in this way. So we start from Y and then come here, and then we take some path of right length, and then go up to G and close the cycle. So for that... So what happens if Y is just right above A prime, then you don't have... Then G is just one vertex. Oh, right. Yeah. So we take this set, the descendant of G, and then this set. So those two sets are we want to connect this and this. We want to connect them with the right length so that uh, we can close it properly. So let's say this y is in y sub j. Y is p sub j with j is smaller than i. And g is a child of is a child of y. Yeah, I was writing it that there, right? Not here. Let's write it here. Yeah. We find a breadth search tree. Breadth search tree T from X. That's the that blue tree and let y be a common ancestor the common ancestor of a prime in p sub j with largest J, which is smaller than I. And we take uh, G be a child of Y, which has some vertices in A prime as its descendant. And let A be the set of uh, descendants of G in A. A prime and let B be the union of B prime and A minus A, A prime minus A. So this is A, and this is B. <coughs> so, we have this partition of, partition A, B of F. So what it says in lemma 2.5 is between those two sets, we can find any path of any length. Because here A is independent set, but B is not independent set. Because A prime, B prime was its unique bipartition. Anything other than A prime B prime is never partitioned into independent set. So B is not independent set, so we can use this lemma. Then,
I let my 2.5 there is the P of length 2K minus 2J minus I minus J minus 1 which is smaller than 2K from some vertex W in A and W prime in B. So there is some vertex W here and some vertex W prime here. But W prime is either here or here, right? It's inside of B, that's what we know. But here or here, but because this path has even length, and this F is bipartite, so it starts here, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it should be here. So odd, even, odd, even, odd, even. So, yeah, right. So it should be W prime is here. And then this P looks this way. And then, what do you know? This goes to, this is descendant of G, so we can go we can find the path from here to G, and here we can find the path from here to Y, avoiding this G, because this is not in here, means that this is not a descendant of this G in this prefer search tree. And then we can close it. Then this length is I minus J, and I minus J, and then that. If I didn't make a mistake, then that gives us a cycle of length 2k. So, p with a path in t from w to g and w prime to y gives us a c2k, which is a contradiction. So, we prove the claim that the uh, HI doesn't contain any theta graph. So now we are almost done, except showing the expansion. We, we now want to show that uh, since this doesn't contain theta graph, it expands. So, okay, so 2.2, equation 2.2 is that the uh, now this actually give us this. So H, H sub I is this graph. So this graph, which contains number of edges. And then it's, num it's vertices. The number of vertices in H is this plus this. And we prove that uh, if it's every degree is at least 4k times, I mean, at least 4k, then it contains a theta graph. But we just show that it doesn't contain theta graph. So it's every degree is at most 4k, and yeah, so I just add one more. It doesn't really matter. So it's less than 5k. Less 4k is less than 5k, so it's, I mean, we get this inequality. So now we can show that the each time it expands. So we prove the following for, I mean, by using induction. Let's say i is between 0 and uh, k minus 1. We want to prove that the hi has at least 10k n to the 1 over k size of b i. And the size of V sub i plus 1 expands at least n to the k minus 1 from the pre previous part. So we use induction to prove this. So this is actually true for i is 0. Because minimum degree condition, this holds the number of edges here is at least 20k n to the 1 over k times 1. And this is 1 when it, i is 0. And this also holds. So base case is checked. 
and then uh, and another thing that I forgot to mention is that because this G prime is bipartite graph, this is independent set, and this is independent set, and this is independent set. So at first we show that we assume we use two exercises to assume that this is bipartite graph, and then it's also have large minimum degree. Because it's bipartite graph, these, these are only independent set. Because there is an edge here, then either it close here or it close here or it close here, we get an all cycle. So that's independent set. So what we know is that, uh, so let's assume this holds for i, which is smaller than Yeah, k minus one. Then the number of edges in H i plus one is at least for all the vertices. I plus one is here, and then I plus two is here, and this H i plus one. And the number of edges here is for each vertex up here. We take the its degree and we add. So its degree in G prime minus the vertices it already used up here. So for this vertex, the number of edges to down here is its own degree minus the number of edges up here. But we want to show that the, the number of edges up here is negligible. So most of them are going down and then making the next part bigger. So this is the expression, so phi sub i plus one, and which is, so its degrees at least 20k n to the 1 over k. So we have this much vertices. And its sum, the number of edges from here to up, is exactly the number of edges between the previous level. And we know that uh, that is at most this. So this is 20k n to the 1 over k times b sub times i plus 1 minus 5k size of bi plus size of bi plus 1. And because in the previous case, we assumed that, I mean, for i, we have this inequality. So this part and this part, I mean, it gave us a bound that uh, this is smaller than this. Because of this, this is much smaller than this. So this all together is almost 10k times this i plus 1 level, which is less than half of this. So this is 10k n to the 1 over k times the i plus 1 level. So this shows this part. And then now we, if we show this, then induction is done. And to show that, yeah, in the printout, it's, its index is wrong, but so it says, in printout, it says piece of i plus 1, but we have to check i plus 2 to prove this for i plus 1. So this goes to i plus 2, this goes to i plus 1. And by using this, this is same as you divide by 5k, and then you move one thing to the other, then you get 1 over 5k times number of edges in i plus 1 minus pi plus 1. Then we just have proved this. So it's actually 10k n to the 1 over k times p sub i plus 1 over 5k minus p sub i plus 1 is bigger than n to the 1 over k p sub i plus 1. So we show this. So by induction, we show this for all i between 0 and k minus 1. Then what we get is v sub 0, I mean, v sub k is bigger than n to the 1 over k, v sub k minus 1. And we keep doing that, then n to the k minus 1 
to decay times p sub 0, which is n. But it's contradiction because at least there is one vertex in up here. So, so in the case level, we should have less than k, n minus k vertices. But this shows that we have m, at least n vertices there, which is a contradiction. So that means one of the level must have a theta graph. So we should have an even cycle. So this proves the theorem 2.6. So this is based on a proof of pickle core. If you are more careful on the analysis, then we can actually show that here we show that the, this C being 100K is enough. That's what we proved. But essentially with the same proof, if you do all the cal calculation better and later analysis better, then you can, I mean, we can make it down to k. Actually, k minus 1 with uh, some additional smaller term here. And later, Book and Jiang come up with a better argument, which give us some 10 times square root of k times rho k. So that was for upper bound. Then what about lower bound? So let's keep that. and. For lower bound, we know that uh, that upper bound is sharp up to constant. In the case of C6, C8, and no, C4, C6, C10. But rest of value, we don't know whether that upper bound is sharp or not. In this case, we use some algebraic methods to, I think these two are algebraic methods, and C10 is much more complicated. Yeah, so to show an upper lower bound, but for other values, we don't know whether it is sharp or not. <clears throat> so I will show you a proof of C4, which give you a flavor of how we use the algebraic method to prove the lower bound on here. So theorem 2.7 is that the uh, A4 for infinitely many values of n. There exists a graph with n vertices. Ah, graph on n vertices. and some constant times n to the 3 over 2 edges containing no C4. So if you consider k equal 2, then the value upper bound we get is some constant times n to the 1.5. And this is exactly, I mean, same thing with uh, different constants. So this lower bound shows that uh, that theorem is sharp up to constant. <clears throat> so here we use some algebraic method, which is very basic. And let's say, let P be a prime, prime number. So what we want to do is we want to construct some graph. So for this, we want to show, so for the lower bound on the external number, we want to show that uh, there exists one graph which has enough number of edges and containing no specific graph that we specified. So let p be a prime number. And we consider, uh, I mean, field on p number. Uh, and we take a cube. So, and we delete 0, 0, 0, 0. So you can consider it as a vector space. So we have a field, and this is three-dimensional vector space with the finite field. And there we will we 
say for certain points in the vector space, we will identify them. We will say a1, a2, a3 is an Another point P1, P2, P3 are equivalent. So we will identify them. If one is the constant multiple of the other. So if there is a, some constant P, a constant K such that the scalar multiple of one is the other. So remember that the, we are not considering 0 0.0.0. 0 .0. So except that, we consider the set of all points in this vector space, except this origin. And then we identify the points on a line. So in this vector space, it is three-dimensional. And then we put a hole in the origin. But still, there are some lines, say, passing through this origin. Then we identify the vertices in, I mean, not points in there. So these points and these points are same. We make them equivalent. And for a point A1, A2, A3, write bracket A1, bracket A2, A3, bracket the, the equivalent class. Containing A1, A2, A3. So this is actually this line. So now we will define our graph using this structure. So we take our vertex set B be the collection of all these equivalent sets. In another way, these lines. A1, A2, A3 is in this vector space except its origin. <coughs> and we say let P, G, P a graph on this vertex B such that equivalent class of A1, A2, A3 is adjacent to P1, P2, P3 If and only if A1, P1 plus A2, P2 plus A3, P3 is 0. So that defines a graph. So we want to show that this graph is what we want. So to show that, we have to check two things. It has enough number of edges. It doesn't contain C4. When does it contain C4? If there is two, say, X and, uh, what did I write? U and V. And if there is, say, X and Y, or are, I mean, this equivalent class. If X is common neighbor of UV and Y is also common neighbor of UV, then we have this C4. So we want to show that uh, if one vertex is adjacent to both of them, then there are no other vertex adjacent to both of them. If we show that, then we show that this graph doesn't contain C4. So in other words, if, suppose, okay, there exists, say, U, which is A1, A2, A3, and V, which is P1, P2, P3, and there is, say, X, Y, Z, 
and x, y, z is adjacent to both, both u and b, then what happens? We have a1x plus a2y plus a3g equals 0, and b1x plus b2y plus b3g equals 0. So this is adjacent to this, and this is adjacent to this means that this is 0 and this is 0. In other words, x, y, g is satisfied by both this equation. But, so, u and v are distinct. u and v are distinct. So, to get this, I mean, c4, u and v should be different. If they are di they are same, I mean, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, how they are adjacent to the other. That doesn't relate to the c4. So for di different u and v, so a, which, a1, a2, a3, and b1, b2, b3 are not constantly multiple each other, and we have this. Then in this vector space, if you consider this vector space, so we have two vectors which are linearly independent. So they belong to the different equivalent class, means they are not constantly multiple each other, so they are linearly independent. And that defines these two equations. So if we take this equation and consider its solution set, then that's plane in this space. And we consider this equation and we consider its solution set, that's plane. And those two plane doesn't coincide because these two are linearly independent. So two plane, so what's the common solution set of two plane? It's one line. One line passing through origin. So, this x, y, g, the solutions, is one dimensional space which pass through this origin. But in our definition, they are collapsed into one point, one vertex here. They are just one, one equivalence class. So x, there is a unique solution set x, y, g up to this equivalence class. So that means that uh, this doesn't happen. So there is no other y which is different from x, which is satisfy also both equation. <coughs> so as u and v are distinct, the set of points in this vector space satisfying both equations form a line through origin it defines on equivalence class, or single equivalence class. Hence, she contains no C4. Because, I mean, if we have C4, then X and Y should be both, both the solution of this. But it has only unique solution in this equivalence class. So it doesn't contain C4. Then, the only thing left to show is that it has enough number of edges. So number of vertices in G is actually, so, so in this vector space, we have P cube vertices, P cube points, and we subtract one for the missing origin, and every line is collapsed by, every line contains p minus 1 points, which is non-zero, and then they are collapsed into one equivalence class. So we have this many vertices in G. And what's the degree of a vert 
certain vertex인지. <웃음> so if we fix just one vertex, a1, a2, a3, then its neighbor is the exactly solution set of this. So if we have one plane, the number of solution in there is p square. One plane contains p square points. And one of them is origin, so we have to subtract one. So it has p square minus one, but p, o, p minus one of them are actually from same equivalence class. So we have to divide by p minus one. So this is p plus one. So every vertex has degree p plus one. So number of edges is the sum of this, so p plus one times n over two. And so n, so, okay, let's again just, I mean, forget all the smaller thing, term, then n is about p square, and number of edges is about p cube. So, for this, if n is p, then we get exactly, I mean, this expression. And if n is not p, then we can use better transpose relate that uh, for every n and every 2n, there is a prime between n and 2n. So we, okay, let's do it there. For n and n over 2, there is a prime p, and we choose that p, and we construct this graph. And then we add n minus p isolated vertices. Then this constant might get half, I mean, half or 1 over, 1 over 2 to the 3 over 2, maybe, but 2 over 3, 3 over 2, a anyway, yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't really change much. So, actually, this is one way to using algebraic methods to find the sharp lower bound. For general k, if we use probabilistic method, we can still find the lower bound, but which is significantly worse than the upper bound. But it's lived as an exercise 2.4, so I Hope you can try it. And yeah, so this is for the morning lecture. We show that the extreme number of even cycle, we prove an upper bound and we prove a lower bound for C4 case. And for general, the lower bound is not known. So if you solve it, then yeah, you can publish your paper. Yeah, you can try to think about it. But anyway, this is some notorious problem. So we dealt with this even cycle. So in the afternoon, we will learn about some technique called dependent random choice, which would give us a bit more, I mean, upper bound on the extreme number of certain bipartite graphs. Yeah, that's, yeah, and also it gives us some, I mean, results regarding non-bipartite graph also, but we will mostly focus about uh, bipartite graph case in the afternoon also. So any question?